Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to be putting back on our on-chain analysis hat, and we're going to be discussing the Bitcoin adjusted dormancy. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. We, of course, do have a lot of interesting charts, especially on-chain analytics. We don't talk about on-chain analytics too frequently on the channel, but it is something that you would have access to, not only for Bitcoin, of course, but for other cryptocurrencies as well, depending on, on what we have the data for. But I, I do want to talk a little bit here about adjusted dormancy. And if you're not familiar with what dormancy is, uh, you can read the description here, but it's essentially defined by, by the destruction and volume. So coin days destroyed divided by the total number of coins transacted on a given day. That might raise the question, well, what is coin days destroyed? Um, I'm glad you asked. We can go click on that right now. So coin days destroyed is the sum of all native units transferred that day multiplied by the amount of days since those native units were last transferred. So, I mean, to just give a brief example, um, if, you know, when five Bitcoin have been held in a wallet for 20 days, then 100 days, 100 coin days are, are created because you have five Bitcoin for 20 days. So five times 20 gives you 100 coin days. Um, and, and so that, that way you can start to understand what does it mean when, when coin days are destroyed. If those coins are spent, then you would have 100 coin days destroyed. So going back over to adjusted dormancy, you now know what, the, uh, what, the, what, what this means, right? What, what does it mean when we say the destruction volume? So coin days destroyed, which is what we just defined, divided by the total number of coins transacted on a given day. Okay, so it, it's basically the average number of days destroyed per coin transacted at, a, transacted at a given day. What's interesting is you can see pretty clearly a lot of spikes in this metric. Um, you'll notice that a lot of these spikes occur during, during big events, right? So, you know, these spikes were clustered around the peak, but you also get spikes near the bottom as well, right? So spikes around the peak, spikes around the bottom. There was even a spike around the 2019 peak, okay? And we also got some spikes here just before this capitulation occurred, right? So at, it's, you'll often find spikes near, you know, tops and bottoms. You can see that there was a spike here as well in July of 2021, just before we had another move higher into what was the secondary distribution phase. Another spike on that, on that initial sell-off before we had sort of a three-month rally, January, February, and March, uh, of early 2022. We also had a spike in this metric back in late 2022. And we also just recently had another spike in it. So history shows us that the spikes do not immediately always have to occur at a change in direction, right? Like in 2019, the spike occurred after this local high. Okay. Um, in 2017, this first spike occurred just before the final rally. The secondary spike occurred just after the final rally. However, when it does spike, it does, it does historically signal some type of, of shift coming likely within the next few weeks is, is what it historically shows. And sometimes it, it actually gets it pretty good. I mean, this, this spike here was basically right when the trend shifted in the summer of 2021. This spike here was right when the trend shifted in January 2022 after the sell-off from November and December. This, sh this, this shift here occurred right at this, at this low here, and then we just had another one. So let's zoom in on, on where this one occurred. If you zoom into it, you'll see that it actually occurred um, on March 30th, so just a few weeks ago. Again, showing you that it doesn't necessarily have to immediately uh, come before a change in momentum. But another way to look at this is to apply, say, like a moving average to it. Right? Like a, here's a 14-day SMA. It might clean it up just a little bit. Um, and, and in this case, you can see a spike in December 2018 just at this local this local bottom here uh, was the market cycle bottom. Uh, we also had one right around the 2019 peak as well. And then we had one right around uh, the, the top just before the the crash into into sort of the march 2020 low we also had a spike here at 42k in january of 2021 this was sort of the blow off rally in, and then we had sort of this distribution phase higher and then we had this one here in july 2021 this one here was at this low in november and then it just spiked up again so i thought this was an interesting metric to look at 
um, because it does show things that might otherwise go unnoticed. I mean, you're not going to you're not going to find these types of of um, metrics or whatever on on just a price chart. But it does give you insight into what people are doing on chain. Uh, we can even overlay the dormancy. So we were looking at the adjusted dormancy. You can also look at just the, the dormancy itself, not adjusted. And it will, I mean, it certainly will just give you pretty similar results. But I, I do like to go into some of the on-chain data occasionally, just so um, we have an idea of what's what's actually going on on-chain. On and you can go to CoinDays Destroyed as well and, and see somewhat similar trends, right? You'll see spikes in it near trend reversals, okay? And if you, if you sort of go through, um, <laughs> and I mean, this spike here was just before a parabolic rally, so perhaps not just before a trend reversal. But a lot of times you will find these spikes near trend reversals, um, if, not, if not immediate trend reversal within the next few weeks. So just something to think about. I, I wanted us to put on our on-chain analysis hat. We haven't done it in a while, so there you go. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you guys like the on-chain data, if, if the frequency at which I do it is probably sufficient, then I'll just keep doing it at that frequency. We have a lot of different, a lot of different metrics that you can look at um, as well. Anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. We do have several different tiers available, uh, including a free one. So make sure you check that out. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.